What's up fam, my name is Macro and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make that Bandles signature womp womp sound. Prepare your ear holes, so this one's a goodie, this one's going to be juicy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. I love that wump sound. Wump or wump? Wump wumbo? Wumbology? The study of wumbo? But yeah, this bass was a lot of fun to make. I'm, I hope you guys are excited because this is really cool. Uh, this is going to be the basses on their own. The first initiation of it is like a really, I called it deep because it's that like deep mid like range heavy sound and for the top layer I just called it grit and I'll turn it up so you guys can hear it better it's kind of sharp sounding so I I had it down like 26 decibels but this one's getting pushed to the side a lot hence the mid side EQ so it's gonna cover like all the higher frequencies whereas this guy right here it's getting emphasis like on the mid range so to start it off i just have the first oscillator in serum on basic shapes and it's set to a triangle wave and i have lfo1 shaped like this for uh the lfo and it's getting sent to the level to control the volume and it's also affecting the fm from b as well i don't know if you guys will be able to hear this it's pretty low but um I made sure that the unison was up seven, so that way it sounds really, really wide. And I'm also detuning it as well. I'm controlling the detune with LFO number three. And LFO three is kind of doing this really cool detuning thing where it's going up and down uh, pretty quick with this real quick ramp right here. Of course you can do it to taste. This actually sounds kind of cool but I'm gonna keep it the way I had it before. And after that, oh, one more thing. Make sure that you always keep the random down so that way it's not starting at different intervals of your wavetable in the oscillator. For oscillator B, I went into basic shapes and I just moved it over to two on the wavetable position. I switched it to sync window and I have that at 1.11%. And this one is getting plus two up on the octaves and the semitones are going up a seventh. So now you're getting some harmonics in with that because of the FMing. And I also have a noise oscillator on there as well. I don't really use the white noise. I think the pink noise sounds a lot better. But once I drag the LFO onto the level, then I go into the matrix and I find where the noise is being affected, which would be right here. And once you put it on, it's going to have the arrow going to the right. I switch it to, I guess it's called bipolar, and it's going left and right, and this is all the way up to 100, keeping the sub on. Because I just didn't want to export out my own sub. And for the filter, I'm using a scream filter. Scream! In the miscellaneous tab, scream low pass, which is interesting because I don't really use the scream filter a lot. But LFO 1, it's affecting the cutoff. And LFO 2 that I have here, which is also half the speed of LFO 1. As you can see, it's at 1 fourth. LFO 2 is at half, so it's like moving just like a little bit slower, like in half time. But that's affecting the resonance and the scream. So I don't know why they call it the scream. I feel like it doesn't even do anything screamy to the sound. But I don't know. I liked it and it came out pretty good. Uh, for the envelope, I just have it. I'm giving it some attack right here. Instead of hitting right away. So I guess I'm pulling the attack back. But after that, we're going to go through the effects. And the first one we have is hyperdimension to give us some width. A sign shaper for distortion. And LFO2 is affecting it right here. And I have the phaser. And you guys know I love the phaser. If you've seen my other videos, phaser's like one of the 
most important effects that I go to on any of my sounds. It's so cool. It gives it so much texture and makes the sound completely different. Got chorus. And for the phaser, I'm just having the frequency get modulated by five from LFO2. Then we've got this EQ, it's giving it more growl to it. And that I'm using LFO1 to control the frequency positions. So you can see they're, they're like sliding onto each other to give it that growliness. And after that, I've got a flange filter. It's flange minus, yeah. And LFO2 is affecting the cutoff. 161 hertz, LFO2 at 11. And then we've got LFO3, which is doing the detuning over here. Also messing with the resonance. And then LFO1 is messing with the mix for it. Then we've got multiband compression. Sweet, sweet. OTT. Oof. 100, 100, 100, 100 for all these guys. Then we've got some delay. It's on BPM and link and it's set to 132 for the left and the right. Ping pong delay. LFO one's messing with the mix. And then LFO three is messing with the feedback. So one important thing is that it's really cool and it's really interesting to see what happens when you put different LFOs either going at the same speed or different speeds on different parameters within your patch because it makes a world of difference. It starts to bring out these different parts of the sound that you probably wouldn't have gotten just by using the same LFO. And then we have some reverb. And then I have this macro right here and I named it phaser messing with the phaser so it's oh no Siri I didn't I didn't say anything <laughs> Siri what the heck <laughs> has that ever happened to you guys you're just talking you don't even say her her name its name and it just turns on I don't understand I, what, what the heck so yeah we just have reverb at the end <laughs> with the macro control messing with the phaser. So this LFO is pretty important. I don't know if you guys do this a lot in your own sound design, but with LFO, like another LFO, I have it control the master tuning. So in this case, I used LFO four and I just went into the matrix. You'll find the LFO here that you're gonna use. And then you just switch it to global and master tuning. And you're gonna make sure it's just going to the right and you just have to bring it up a little bit. I think it's probably like, oh, I have it down. So in this case, I have it down. Usually I'll bring it up to like one or two, but I have it at minus two for this one. And it's gonna affect the uh, the master tuning of the whole sound. <coughs> Woo, beer's making me belchy. <laughs> <coughs> So yeah, you can hear it kind of like going down in the tune. And then we also have some modulation going on too. So it's happening over here when it gets a little quicker. So I have the LFO 2's rate getting messed with and then also LFO 1's rate. And then that macro control I put on it for the phaser, I'm having it affect different hits for the sound. <laughs> And then the phasey part. And I think I'm also affecting the pitch too, but in the actual MIDI control. Where are you? Where are you, pitch? Yeah, here's the pitch bend. So I'm having it affect the actual MIDI. Am I doing it on all of them? Oh yeah. <laughs> so I'm affecting, I can't believe I forgot about this part. So I'm affecting the uh, the pitch for the, the MIDI itself. And this is what's giving it like that movement. I think if I turned it off, but I don't want to turn it off because I'm afraid I'll lose the modulation. Uh, it sounds very like stagnant. 
when you're actually affecting the pitch, I think that's also helping give it that whoop, whoop, whoop sound. So you guys can always play around with that. See, you can hear how it's really messing with the sound. And now for the post-processing. I almost said post-production. <laughs> I have this company, OTT, that I use a lot. I don't have it on here, but now I'm using this NASCO OTT. Oh my God, it's so crazy. I'll, I'll have to show you guys in the next video, but I'm using that good old company OTT that I always use. But you can copy the parameters of that down, or you can actually um, get it in the download, which I forgot to tell you guys. Um, in all my videos, as you know, if you've watched my videos before, I put a download link in the description for you guys to have the entire file and the serum presets as well if you're not in Ableton. So if you have FL or Logic, you'll be able to use all the presets. It's just for the post-processing, you're going to have to use things that are similar to it. So you could use the Xfer OTT plugin. I'm pretty sure if you're a dubstep producer, you probably have it already. Um, but yeah, you can use that. You can use any other kind of multiband compressor to do this. Um, but yeah, like I said, I give this all away to you guys for free because I just want to be able to help you guys as much as I can. Um, let's get back to the sound. So we've got that. Then we have this erosion preset. It's called Hiss. You just come up here on Ableton to the top left, type in erosion, and then you'll see Hiss as one of them. Play. So this is just bringing up a lot of uh, like noise to the to the sound, so it sounds wider. And then I found this one. It's called Sine 4.6 Mid. This is another erosion preset in Ableton. And after that, I have this Tynan pipe resonator that um, I made. It's a it's a Corpus uh, plugin. You just type in Corpus on the top left, and then uh, once you load it in, you can copy the parameters in here. But the main thing is switching it to. Um, usually, I have it on pipe, but in this case, I switched it to tube, and I have it with these settings: the LFO at sixty-seven percent, you know, all this, but. The main thing is not turning the dry wet all the way up and bringing the decay down because if you leave it on like a hundred percent it just sounds gross like what's it doing usually it's like over here that sounds pretty cool <laughs> but I usually keep the dry wet really low. It just affects it a little bit, but yeah. Um, play around with that, it's a lot of fun. And then VR Fat Rack. And then we've got EQ8. Just taking out some of the highs. For the second part, this is the high end portion. We're gonna turn it up. For this one, I think I pretty much just duplicated the original patch. And then um, I just changed a couple of things around. I think it has to do with the uh, the flange filter. Yep, I changed it to a reverb filter. Yeah, but you can see like everything else is the same. I still have that same modulation, which I should re-enable. Oh no, we're gonna turn that off. Stop. Do I just delete it? Yep. All right. So it's the same thing. Sign shaper is the same. Phaser is the same. All that. I just changed it to the reverb filter and we put that bad boy on. So it's giving it some high end grit and cut off. I have at 48 hertz and LFO 2 is messing with it again. LFO 3 is messing with the resonance and LFO 1 is messing with the mix. I think that's it. I didn't, I didn't do anything else differently than that. And I just kept the sub and the noise off because it's already so like noisy and whiny. This is the MIDI file for it too. You guys probably saw it earlier, but it's all in G. It's at G0. 
It's the same thing up here as well. They're the same. See? G. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go into post-production time. Company OTT, just like before. VR fat rack. And then we've got EQ8, and I'm doing mid-side EQ on this. So if you don't know how to do that, you just come over here, change stereo to MS for mid-side. It's gonna first be on mid. I just brought it to 445 to cut out all the low end did a little notch cut right here or bell curve this right here should actually be lower because that's supposed to hurt the ears so we'll just bring that guy up bring this guy back nice and then for uh, the sides you just click on the M and it'll switch to the side mode and then I just cut it to about here at 1.3 Brought the emphasis up a little bit in the highs and then just did a brick wall cut. I mean, the main focus of this is to show you guys how to make sounds that are similar to them. So that way you can put them into your own production and like you learn these techniques to make your own really cool sound. But if you guys want to link up with me and talk and communicate with me. My Instagram is macro official. And if you enjoyed the content, make sure that you subscribe and you ring the notification bell. So that way you know exactly when I put new videos up. And if this helped you, please leave a like. It really helps the channel as well. But other than that, I wish you guys a really good day. I hope that you guys have fun playing around with this Ableton project and you learned something from it today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later. First made a giggle, no pickle. Then made a tickle, my pickle. Pedal on me like a nickel. Ice on me, drill like a sickle. Bye bye, your bike, and if I bought a bike, then I'm putting ice on a bicycle.